All right, so in the last video, I showed you how to create um, the different proxy modules and kind of attach them to each other and how that workflow occurs. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over this half of this uh, first tab of setup proxies. So um, yeah, just going over what each of these things does. So to begin with, I'll just create a uh, biped human and we'll work with that. <clears throat> so when you're working with um, different characters, you can end up getting a lot of um, overlapping or really close proxies together in condensed areas, for example, around the head here, or even around the hands. And especially when they're of similar sorts, so in the case of the hand here, there there's two different um, FK chains. So what you can do is you can actually override the colors um, that are set, which you know they're they're based off of um, the presets here. But I can change them to anything I want. So for example, if I wanted the thumbs to be uh, a different color altogether, I could choose a different one, and then they'll use that. And depending on what you like to use for your background color, you know you may want to change all of them to something else as you go. Um, yeah, and just choose what looks good to you. And then if you ever want to go back to the default, just simply hit default and then it will put it back to whatever its original color is based on the module type. And from there, uh, we have cloning. So I can clone a module. And um, this is really useful if you wanted to have like multi-limbed or um, say you had like fingers set up and you wanted to add more fingers or, or whatever. Um, and it's also really good if you have like a long chain of things. So let's say, for example, uh, I wanted this guy to have uh, two arms, and I'd set them up like exactly how I wanted them to be on the one arm. And I don't want to have to like recreate the whole thing. Um, so let's say something like that. What I can do is I can actually clone a module. So all I have to do is uh, select the name of the module, or sorry, give it a new name. Uh, so I'll just call this arm2. And then uh, I just need to select whatever it is I want to clone. Now, in this case, there's multiple ones below it that are other modules. So we have two FK chains attached to this arm. So if I clone, it's going to ask me, all right, um, so you've chosen arm2 for the name of the arm, what do you want the finger and thumb to be called? And they're indented, so it's similar to like a hierarchy. Uh, so I'll call this uh, finger2 and thumb2. And once I've done that, I'll go ahead and hit OK. And now I'll have set that to world. So now I'll have two more arms that are exactly the same. And I can go ahead and position those wherever I want. And from there, like let's say I clone that and I'm like, well, I don't really want the thumbs on this one. So if I want, I can go in and delete them using delete selected modules, and that would get rid of the thumbs on that one. Um, the other thing I could do now that I've moved these, it may not make sense to have them attached to the same module. So what I could do is, uh, or same proxy node. Um, so I can choose a different one. So let's say I wanted to attach them to uh, spine 3. So I can load that one in here, and then I can attach uh, like that. And I can see the blue lines, the attachment lines are now on this joint. So it indicates to you where the attachment is. So now if I move this one, you can see those move with it. And if I were to pull the whole thing, there we go. Uh, so yeah, I just showed you how to delete selected modules. So I can delete longer ones if I wanted to. And this, again, if it's a mirrored one, it will delete both sides. So whatever you do to one side, you know, sort of affects the other because it's assumed that because you've created it that way, that you want symmetry. Um, all right. So the next one is uh, posing. So this is basically mirroring one side or the other or resetting. So if I wanted to go uh, have this left branch go to the right, I could do either selected or branch or all. Now one thing. Um, about this is it doesn't affect um, the root node necessarily or the parent nodes in the same way. Um, so you have to be kind
kind of careful of that. Um, well, when you're resetting, I should say. So if I reset, so it was selected, if I have this one selected, and I hit uh, reset, reset doesn't affect uh, the parent nodes, nor does it affect the root node. And the reason for that is just because typically if you move these ones into position, you don't want to reset them. And same with if I had like these attached to the same, if I had like multiple coming off of one, and I hit reset, then it would collapse them all on top of each other, and it would kind of stack. So that's why the parent nodes don't reset. Uh, so there I did just the selected. I can also choose to, um, so if I grab this one, I could say selected left to right, and I would do that one too. Um, but if I want to do the whole thing, just undo here, put that one back, there we go. Uh, I can choose to do the whole branch, left to right. And I can also choose, if I want, just do the entire uh, proxy rig. And in that case, I don't have to have anything selected. It will do the whole thing. So then I may want to change this. Just do the branch left to right. There we go. Um, next up is uh, pinning. So one thing that can happen is you may want to make changes to uh, your rig and um, you don't want to affect where some other things are. So let's say you really like the positioning of um, of where the arms are. You can uh, adjust that. Like so let's say I wanted to go and move the spine here, but not affect these upper arms. And I'll just pull these out a little bit just so that's a little more clear. There we go. So let's say I want to adjust this but not have the arms move so what I can do is select these and I'll just say pin and what that'll do is if I deselect you can see that the lines are red and now if I move this you can see those ones don't move with it and I can adjust this back to a new position and then if I want I can go back and unpin these modules and now it moves together again so it's pretty useful um, when you're having to change things that other things are attached to um, what else? Oh, I don't think we went over this one, did we? Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah, so another good one with uh, attaching modules. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping over, uh, jumping back here. But let's say um, I wanted to uh, change the number of joints on this spine. So if I go load here, and if I apply the edits, you see how it deleted... Um, deleted those arms and that's just how it is right now currently so if you want to keep those arms but change the number of joints what you can do is retarget these to something else temporarily so I'm gonna um, attach it to the root for now so I'll just select the root load that grab the um, the parent node and I'll say attach to the new one so now if I go in and I make changes uh, to this let's say I wanted like 12 joints there we go so now I have 12, and then I can go back and attach these to whatever I want. So I'll load this one in, and then attach it, and there we go. So that's how you can preserve uh, some of your modules without changing their position or losing them all together by using the attachments and uh, the pinning. Now, the other thing you can use is uh, transfer transforms. So um, if you have similar or basically identical um, modules of the same type, you can uh, transfer the transforms from one to the other. Now this can get a little funny if they're created in different orders and you've made weird changes to them. It may not work all the time, but just as a simple example, um, I'm going to create, let's say, uh, I'm just going to call this rib and I'll just do one chain with four joints X outward. There we go. And I'll just make some changes to it. Um, maybe something like this. And I'll just quickly go left to right on this one. There we go. And so let's say I wanted to, um, let's say I had another one that was very similar, so I'll call this one rib 2, which is exactly the same. So what I can do 
is select uh, the target, so the one I want to reference from, followed by the destination where I want to copy to, and then I'll just choose uh, branch transfer. And I want to include the parent as well, so by default it doesn't include the parent. And there we go. And it's relative to um, the position uh, of its parent. So if I had attached this one to the same one, it would put the two right on top of each other, which is why include parent is a, something you can toggle on and off. And then I can do the same on this side as well. And there we go. All right, so the next one is uh, saving transforms. So what I can do is I can save the positional data of this entire rig. And well, the proxy rig, not the actual rig, which we will get to in the next tutorial. But um, with the proxies, I can go save transforms. And I'll just put this in my data and I'll call this like a rapid rig module uh, save transforms zero one or whatever naming convention you want to use. And so now that that's saved, if I have a rig that's pretty much identical, I can load these transforms onto that. So let's say I had a different one, different scene, um, and it was all, I'm just going to go through and reset all this. I'll reset. And I'm just going to go through and actually manually do these ones. So now it's sort of back to what would be like a default position. So if I wanted to load the transforms from a different file, um, and it should even work if uh, some of the different modules, oops, whoops. There we go, delete these ones. Okay, um, so if I were to load those transforms now, there, so you can see it loaded them in and it ignored the ones that were uh, created, like those ribs. So those were ignored. So that's how you can transfer transforms from one rig to another that may be a little bit different. And then lastly, we have a save and load setup. So this allows you to do is save an entire setup and then load it in to a fresh scene. So let's say I know I want to be using this or this is my template for the rest of my characters. So what I can do is I can go save setup and I'll call this uh, rm save setup 02 if you have an old one that I was using and so now if I create a new scene I just choose uh, load setup I can then load that one in and there we go so this is a way that you can kind of create your own presets so the presets work very similar where it's just uh, populating based on uh, some settings that I've created. So you can save and load your own in and then uh, again you can go in and modify these around so let's say like chances are I wouldn't want that one to be there so I can change grab that one and then I'll load it. Oops. There we go. Just like that. So that's pretty much it for uh, the second half of this. In the next tutorial, I'll be going over generating rig, which is actually not that much, and then just showing you how some of the controls work. Thanks for watching.